Well, as much as the crow would love to be wearing his hat right now, it's uh, it's not time for that uh, that hat today. Today is a different kind of hat day, and I got to talk about a couple of different hats I'm gonna wear today, guys. So welcome to uh, you know your daily cup of Joe, as I would look at it, guys. As I do try to produce daily content here on the channel, all things about GI Joe classified or Hasbro or my own custom creations. We're making customs based off stuff and just our thoughts and whatever about Joe that we want to talk about. Because a lot of us are the guys of the age where we remember this line very, very fondly from our childhoods, right? So, uh, and so this video is going to be a little bit different than what you guys have gotten used to. It's a follow up to the videos I was doing yesterday where I shed a little bit of, uh, I turn off a couple of lights and I put some things into the darker tone of how I feel about some of the things about uh, this, this line, my frustrations where I think things fail or, fell off the mark or where I think some critical fails come, right? Uh, and you guys saw, I'm willing to, I'm willing to put any kind of perspective on that that I think is viable. And I told you, you know, the very unpopular vote. To me, Rakondo symbolized a horrible thing. It really did. It was a great figure. I love that figure, but symbolized a horrible thing that Hasbro was willing to do to us. Uh, so, I have to get into my darker darker way you know me guys I try to stay positive why because all the all the negative gets talked about in its own way guys it's organic to the discussions that are going on in lives if you're participating in lives with say is chat or punk with toys or, or apparently artist shark or um, uh, Aaron the toy enhancer even mine you know we could we could talk about the darker things and the less the less pleasing aspects of this line don't we, Krusty? You talk about them all the time. Shut the fuck up. Uh, and uh, in doing that, I don't feel the need to constantly make videos to just be negative about Hasbro. I am buying these figures and I am parting with a sum of money that I budget into my weekly budget uh, as a retired veteran. And that is money that I'm investing into something sentimental to me. To me. Not to everybody. And I get that. Right? What applies to me will not and should not apply to everybody else, but it will apply to some. I am nostalgic about this line because I was born in 1973. So by the time I was 10 years old, I was being introduced to the original 13 and the Blue Troopers and Cobra Commander on the shelves of Kmart and Zellers and then in comic book form and in the commercials. And then I was spending my whole childhood chasing after cartoons and toys. So now I'm a 50 year old man. I have an entire military career involving armored vehicles and frontline combat. You think G.I. Joe didn't have something to do with my perception of why I was willing to go to the army? Sure, probably some level, some subconscious level, but it's ironic that I, I come back to it now with such a strong sense of perspective on it, guys. So uh, Hasbro as a company, I don't feel is very trustworthy. That's one thing I will say. Are they respectable? Sure. Are they trustworthy? No. Uh, that's my first negative thing I'm going to talk about. It's the negative stuff about Hasbro, and then I'll talk about the negative stuff about YouTube if I feel the need to. I'll try and keep this under a half hour. So, Krusty, this is Krusty. I'm the crow. This is Krusty. Krusty is here to remind me that you guys don't need the sunshine and rainbows and lollipops anymore. <laughs> and Hasbro isn't listening to me anyways. Clearly. You know, but uh, more and more of you are, so that's great, and I appreciate all one of every single one of you. So yeah, Hasbro is not trustworthy. Why? Because they manipulate their market very well. They know how to do it, and they're doing it uh, under the guise of trying to keep us happy. And by us, I don't mean the royal we, as in the Joe Collector. I mean the the us, the ones that were there, 1982 to 1984 with our jaws dropped. Christmas was easy for our parents and for friends to know what to get us. Anything off that shelf, we were good, right? We had pipe dreams like having a flag in our bedroom and not the one waving with our with our national symbol, but the G.I. Joe one on our carpet so we could land our sky strikers that we got last Christmas. We are now 50 year old adults or in and around that bracket and we have either a retirement income or an ongoing rate income where we are probably somewhere at the peak of our revenue uh, intake in our careers, right? 
you've been working for a while now you're probably making about as much as you're gonna make right so the, the hasbro is well aware of who we are and the the perfect lightning storm of that demographic and that that income bracket right now and it's not going to last forever they've got a window of about 10 years right and we started in 2020 so we're four years in and it's doing very well despite a really shitty start depending on I don't know why they reflected a great idea for a toy based it off of a flash in the plan pan idea of a video game like Operation Blackout but that's how they got started on it and then roll right into incorporating Snake Eyes the movie into this line and this is where I'm saying Hasbro manipulates they have contracts that they have to fill with movies and, and companies we get this we know that's why they were going to lose so much money last year uh what that name by packaging but the snake eyes movie moved as a figure line like it was going to sell as the regular part of the product when they know damn well movie line figures are niche at best and don't probably have the best sales returns annually especially for a movie that you know wholeheartedly was running a very terrible risk in theaters and proved as such a Snake Eyes Origins. So to have a, a figure set of, of another Snake Eyes variant, uh, a Storm Shadow variant, a Scarlet variant, a Baroness variant, and then a Kiko variant, suddenly come into the numbered series started with Classified, was Hasbro manipulating us again to say, well, if you really are collectors, you'll stay in the order of numbers, right? You'll you'll be numbered collectors as well. Box collectors will have to buy two of these if they are also opening collectors, but the minimum, we expect you'll buy this because you are dedicated to the G.I. Joe line. You like what we're putting down right now for some reason. I don't know how it survived that, but it did, thank goodness. Right, but they moved on past that. Uh, but continually they they keep dropping little hints and things like this they've embraced the new medium that they didn't have back in 82 right and back in 82 uh it was whatever made it onto newsprint or the back of the cardboard or if you found it in a comic book or you knew the guy who worked at hasbro and put the hot dog out or wherever right um we didn't have internet news didn't travel fast and feedback did not come back the same way it was like a like a stamp send your envelope off six to eight weeks later they get it six weeks eight weeks after that you get it kind of response time right but that era i would say had far more customer interaction with the company than what we see today hear me out um <laughs> do you have a choice hear me out um blah 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 like share subscribe guys uh back in those days by having to take the time to write or type a letter and, and send it and expect a response you had to have somebody to send it to so that information had to be kind of put forward by the company and you could get access to it through phone calls uh through messages on the back of the box on how to reach the company all this stuff that now is all done electronically right uh but you had a complaint department and you could access it and you know that, that i find these days when the company acknowledges yo i sent you a flawed product they they overdo it on purpose to show generosity with the exchange that's the stories you hear and it may compel a lot of drama as to why people do all this horrible return horse shit with a different figure in a box so that they can continue to manipulate that generosity i don't know but it, it's, it's a piece of shit move really and they've they've made their own beast by being that way i guess but back in the day remember gi joe used to come with something called a flag point attached to it every card back had it it was right there above the file card and right below the wave release the little checklist we all used as kids going got him got him need him got him scott's got him gonna steal him you know um all these things that we had on the back of the file card that we have been griping about with Hasbro for the longest time you should have brought this back what we care Hasbro says we do we want you to have your childhood back that's why we work so hard to give you you know great figures like snow job oh doesn't he remind you of it? everything you loved about Joe and yes okay great but you you've invested a lot of money into your boxes you really have people have lost their jobs over them right plastic free packaging races digital renders 
Why? Why at no point have you rectified this particular complaint from the consumers that are feeding you, belt feeding you, by the way, their money? They are. They're belt feeding you. If you have a his tank, you did it. If you have more than one map, you did it. If you are on every pre-order, we did it. I am one of those guys, right? Consistently worked into a weekly, if not monthly budget. Then you're belt feeding Hasbro. Okay. So why aren't they listening to that? Because they don't actually care. That would mean to employ somebody to create these things and to reduce the the graphics of that they've already established will work with their line for now. So, I mean, it's all time and money, I'm, I'm sure. And possibly bring them back another job. Is it worth doing to hear us stop complaining about it? Well, no, if you had a plan on doing something about it. But again, here we go, Hasbro. What's that QR code shit about? Hasbro manipulates us by making us believe that certain things are relevant when they're not. Then on every box, if you were to do what I'm about to do, let's go grab a random Joe box, shall we? And let's talk about where Hasbro tells you to care, but you don't. Oh, this is a good box. That's a good box. Sure, why not? Let's grab that box. Box, box, box. All right, ooh, I grabbed Falco and everybody's favorite. Okay, guys, Hasbro tells you to care about these things, right? These little action symbols that are denoting special things about these guys. I, that's supposed to substitute for a file card. You've given us two and a half inches of cubic space to work with there versus the personal touch of Ron Ruda and an editor who cared to give that character a little bit of something on the shelf. No, no, no. I can totally see how my Falco and his triple bullet asterisk, word bubble, and lightning bolt. Yeah, he <laughs> is all lightning bolt. Oh my god, they nailed it. They nailed it. Lightning bolt. Yep, yep. Uh, they don't care. They could have changed it now. We're up to how many hundred right now? 113, 111, 100 and whatever. Yeah, snow job. You can fall for that. Uh, I did, but yeah, things are falling down, and that's okay. Um, They've made no course correction. And, and if they really wanted to make a course correction, then why the hell is this QR code still linked to their home page? Where's that QR code gone to? Is it on, on this one? I swear they were on all of them at some point. Maybe maybe it came later in the line again? I'm sure there's... I, gr I grabbed three boxes. Let's find one that had the QR code because I'm not going to lose this point. Uh, I might... Oh my gosh, are they the newer thing? Okay, I'll grab one that I know for sure. I grabbed a bunch of older boxes in my mind. Good, good, good girl. Let's have a look at these GI Joes. There we go. So these QR codes that I'm talking about right here. So Jody Shooter Craig and Snow Job. Ha ha, direct from Hasbro by the way. <laughs> um, the QR code only takes you to their webpage doesn't take you to anything relevant about any individual character. You've heard me harp on this before. If Hasbro was serious about actually trying to connect us to the nostalgia like they like they do, um, this shouldn't be a problem. This should be an enticing challenge for them. And they've done nothing with this challenge. And it's kind of why I can honestly say they use our nostalgia as a manipulation and marketing only. And while they do a fantastic job reflecting these characters, I question their personal commitment at times as to why uh, these characters hit the shelves the way they do. I talked about it with barbecue. There was no forethought in barbecue. And you can't tell me there's a whole lot of thought going into Starduster right now. Nobody asked for Starduster. Nobody, nobody in large numbers asked for Starduster. You can, you can rest assured. And yet it's being done up with a lot of resources, right? Um, there are so many other characters that people have demanded that Hasbro plays little games with. Hooded Cobra Commander, I don't care, um, but I feel like it's political. And that's another thing. I feel like after all their other duplicity, and I, it's, it's it's transparent the strategies they use against us when you really look at them. You know, the, the hype words they use to get us thinking, oh, Dreadnoughts, oh, what? Yeah, 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 Dreadnoughts everything. No, 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 just 
Dread knock one thing. Okay, all right, yeah. Uh, uh, vehicle, what, 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 just this one, but we'll, we'll repeat it three times. Oh, okay. The van, yeah, okay. <laughs> you know, like, the ram is the prime example, right? Um, rather than give us something new, it's easier for them to reprint because the license on the molds and all the expenses attached to these designs need to be continually lucrative and sustainable and we get that but don't sell them off to us as something to get excited about uh or delivered to us cryptically you know even the ferret i found lacked luster based on the digital photos but i'll see it when i see it in in hand and and formulate an opinion there because i think the driver will salvage that right but right now um the vamp is the only thing to go off of as to whether or not the retail vehicles uh, can follow suit with the care and attention that they seem to have put with the flight pods. Okay, the flight pods are a good example of where people were satisfied, but the, the thing had some problems. It was a tricky little situation. I watched the reviews and I get it, you know, the ball joint for the weapon and, and things like that. It got a little confusing. But overall, people were satisfied with it. So let's see what they're saying about the vamp. That's great. Uh, but Hasbro will now use this to keep you bait and hook on what they think you want to see, right? And it'll be continual repaints when what you're asking is for something new. The last manipulation that they're doing to us that's really got me upset now that I'm 18 minutes in or however minutes into the video is again, using that nostalgia and, and realizing that they've got a good market to form camps on things, right? So I, I appreciate the, when Emily says, nothing is off the table, everything is fair game. And we get figures that are from say 1994 or 1996, 98 for the case of like, say Tiger Force uh, Opa. When we get figures like that, it challenges my perspective on did I like that figure before? Why do I like it now? What's what what did they see in it? I like those games, but doing them for the sake of doing them sometimes seems to be Hasbro's big approach. And what I get upset about is they make them into big productions and divert a lot of funding to those ones as opposed to putting the appropriate amount of funding and care and to say a different one that maybe their fans were looking forward to a little bit more, such as Falcon, right? Um, so there's that whole issue. But it delivers a, the solid message when I see that numeric, numeric sequence line. And it comes into play with the 60th anniversary soldiers. Okay, they are not numbered into the line, and that is fine. Okay, there's 60th anniversary. There won't be a 61st anniversary soldier or a 62nd anniversary soldier. We won't see them repeating a numbering sequence, so I get leaving them out, I suppose. However... The HasLab figures that were attached to the his tank are a part of that num numbering sequence. The tactician, the gunner, and the driver. They're all in the hundreds there. So they are a part of the numeric sequence. So now, if you are a numbers collector who has been doing your best to stay on top of this, but you were not able to secure yourself for whatever reason a his tank, right? That sequence is broken and you're going to have to go to the scalper's market at best to find those numbers again unless Hasbro does a reprint package of some sort for those that's the kind of manipulation I felt was unfair I feel like right now Hasbro is painting a yellow brick road towards their HasLab projects in support right um we're not seeing it so much with the Dragonfly although Night Force is incorporated into those tier unlocks as the way to get crazy legs and ripcord uh, but we are seeing it with a lot of Cobra stuff. 788 His Fire Team, as much as I love this thing, and I am I am repurposing as we speak all of my, well, all two of my Python patrols, plus a couple of other figures. I am painting them up to match up to this His Fire Team um, uh, uh, uniform pattern, the red and the black and the grays. Because it seems very natural. And I'm using some kit from Loki Wartooth and kit that was sent to me by Digital Diarrhea to turn this into an assault troop. And I can explain an assault troop another time. But uh, 
back in the day, I was a member of an assault troop uh, here in Canada, and I deployed to Kosovo as such, and it was a rock and roll good time. Uh, ups and downs, but I mean, it was uh, it was an education, man, and it was a very unique experience. Okay, so I'm gonna, I, I am a big fan of that 788, but look at the color sets. They are designed for the His Fire team, right? They'll work with Crimson Guard for sure, uh, but they are designed to really buff out that His. And that's uh, why we're getting a Techno Viper regular and a Techno Viper with the MMS that's done up in, again, the His 788 fire team partner uh, combo, right? So that's why I'm doing my guys up uh, to match that that color set. I'm, do, I'm doing different roles, different kind of support roles and having some fun with it because to me, that's building an assault troop. And an assault troop's role for, for when I did it, it was mechanized infantry, basically. We rolled it with our own support unit that would uh, dismount and fight a fight on the ground. Or, you know, we, we practiced demolitions and uh, ambushes and clearance drills and, you know, uh, a lot of uh, building ambushes and uh, uh, like obstacles, thank you. Obstacles, and like I said, demolitions and countermine warfare, things like that. Uh, it was a good time, a lot of education to it, but it was basically 10 guys supporting an entire armor column. And that's kind of what I see these guys doing. You know, we had the Carl Gustav, they, that's what these guys got. They're, you know, they have a anti-armor weapon, they have an officer, we had an officer. They would have a sergeant, a 2IC, which we would have. They would have a vehicle like an APC, like we had. Uh, we had the bison we would roll around in. But they would have a sharpshooter, a tactician, whatever you want to throw in there. Uh, but they're definitely going to have a demolitions expert because uh, I got to utilize this gridiron kit that I've been sitting on that Digital Diarrhea sent me. Uh, but my point being is... Uh, if you look at it, everything is gearing towards the, the, that right now. So the next HasLab that comes, my concern is what regular classified figures are going to be pushing me towards that to be feel, to feel complete into that. How many numbers in the line when the Dragonfly comes out am I going to be missing? Like Glenda, Wild Bill, Crazy Legs, and, uh, and, and Ripcord. There's four figures right there that numbering sequence won't allow me to have in my numbers if I don't get the Dragonfly or buy Scalper's figures. So that's how I feel Hasbro is like playing the nostalgia against us, but at the same time, just manipulating it a little bit. They can do these little things like file card care or instead of playing the internet rumors game and leak drops and blah, 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 making YouTube guys go crazy over who reported what first, just go back to the pack and release your, release your wave art once every quarter. And so every quarter we know what's coming. We just don't know when it's going to be hitting the shelves, but my God, there's all the releases coming. No more name only drops. There they are. On the very first one we bought from last wave. Bam. Oh, oh, oh my God, that's what's coming. These strategies worked fine. People would like these fine. What you're doing is you're trying to create a buzz when there's no buzz to have. You're trying to keep relevant when maybe it's okay for you to take a time out for a month. Uh, and then you drop things that now become subjective to a very critical internet market. So that rolls into the last part. Because <laughs> uh, I really don't want to be bitching and moaning the whole time, complaining about just Hasbro. I'll mention things I don't want to be because of the, the, the negative side of it. Uh, well, I really am not showing you guys a whole lot. So maybe I'll just chat. Blah, 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 blah. All right. What I don't appreciate, uh, I, I still respect. All right. So I, I want that really clear. When I talk smack about something, it's not like I can't put myself in that other person's shoes and see for a moment why they might choose the things that they've done or said uh, and, and be that way and accept it and feel fine with it where I wouldn't. Everybody's different. That's fine. Um, but I'm going to talk about the why I don't go super dark negative and unload on Hasbro every day or Viper Island, why I'm not joining in on the boycotts or whatever is going on there, or why I don't pick a side between so-and-so and so-and-so -and -so when, when things get a little heated. Um, one, I don't care. Drama's amusing, but only if it stays amusing. When it becomes awkward, uh, then it's drama for the wrong reasons, and I don't like that. Um... But 
I don't like big egos for one. That is a huge thing that just annoys me. I get how they're formed and I get how people will substantiate them. Oh, speaking of egos, the mind depends on this. You got to do that. Okay, there you go. Uh, <laughs> got to grow the channel. I want to I want to I want to get to the point where my relevance is there and I'm giving away prizes more and I'm having a good time and that's it. I ain't hustling anything. It's a free membership. You subscribe daily crow you get the notifications and uh you i get the likes and uh we get to feel a little bit warranted to do this stuff more often anyways um egos have no place i think um being at the forefront of your content a lot of the times and that's what i worry about with drama when i see it i expect a little bit of drama i expect people not to get along and i expect channels to have a rivalry at some point and it's good for likes oh my god yes it is the, you have a heated drama between another person. You have a feud. It's like wrestling when you're a kid. Like, oh my God, they're not fighting till WrestleMania? Oh my God, I've got to watch every Monday night raw and see just maybe they might take a poke at each other before the bell. Oh, 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 it gets like that, right? And uh, we all, we all, we're all guilty of it. I think of it, giving it a little bit more fuel for the fire than we want to give it. And that was always my fear. If I got negative, would I fuel a drama? that i didn't want you know the, i don't mind a, a good poking back and forth like what goes on between me and aaron and uh and you know i try to get it going with some of the guys in the chat and it's great that's fine right but when it starts getting dark and personal and stuff like that and starts making people divide into camps i think it's absolutely fucking useless and pointless except to make your own channel elevate itself for the wrong reasons right and i didn't want that um, but I can handle watching almost every type of YouTuber out there and see and do, do my best to see the perspective they're bringing across. And if their ego is in it, their ego is in it. And so, yes, guys, I understand Viper Island is something that people are like, Ryan, are you sure you, you're supporting them? Yeah, I am. Um, I've said it before. They're like a TV show to me and I treat them as such. I'm not going to like every episode. I may not agree with every plot line or I may not get every joke. Right, um, but do I like the cast? Do I agree with the show? Does it does it does it flow well for me to understand it? And does it do I find it informative? Sure, absolutely. I enjoy watching episodes of Viper Island. Same way I enjoyed watching the news at six o'clock when I was a kid, or watching Three's Company just before that. Right, um, I took what I took out of it, and if there was things that I disagreed with, fine. They res they resonate with me, but it's not going to make me form a camp. An ego, uh, being called ego because uh, you defend, you, you call the ball sometimes and then you brag when you get it right. Well, okay, but I see a lot of people doing that. Shit, I did that with mine. <laughs> um, I don't think that's enough to, to demonstrate a high amount of annoyance. But when it starts going back and forth and do a squabble after that, then that's when the annoyance comes. That's when the camps get formed. And that's when I'm like, okay, but why did it have to get there? Like, and it's fine. I'm not judging whoever is in these camps for why they're there. They're there. That's fine. It's just I didn't want my channel to ever go down like that. And I think one day it might be inevitable I might go down like that. Because I do have one strong opinion about the type of video I can't fucking stand. And it's the I only do this if it go on clearance after you only see one leaked photo or something. The, the, the now number of people out there that claim that they're they're fans and they support or you know they, they um, they're being fair you know they're just keeping it real and they're tailing you like it is and all that stuff the number of times I see them reacting to a single fucking photograph that gets leaked and all of a sudden they've got this strong strong opinion and it's not just about what is in the photo it's about what's not in the photo and what should have been in the photo and what they should have done and the 15 other things that the you know were way more fucking important and therefore this piece of crap is not even worth buying people what are you doing if you're stupid if you buy this piece of crap i'm only getting it on clearance <laughs> i i see those rants when i saw mad marauders come out when i saw night force i was in fucking paris seeing that when well, you guys were it was like three o'clock in the morning where you're at I was just getting up having my coffee going Pfft. what the hell the amount of crypto dump people put onto a single photo and decide the fate of that product 
it's funny because I find, you know, having only been paying attention for the last year, some of these people are the same ones that got every damn thing in their in their in their pocket as far as the line goes. But to hear them talk, you'd think they only got it on clearance sale or they stole it off the Hasbro truck because fuck Hasbro. <laughs> you know, it's all vindictive and spiteful sometimes against the company. But yet you're 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 kind of making your you're making your buck off of it, I guess. I don't know, man. I can't get behind that. I can't piss on something. Uh, until I've at least seen it in the store, picked it up, had a good look, give it that proper examine, but off a single leaked photo, uh, or a pair of leaked photo, or some rumors. F. That's a lot of that's a lot of hate towards a company manifesting in the in the, in a way that's just to me intolerable. I don't tend to watch those a whole lot, but they are kind of unavoidable. There's a few out there, and. When they get tied back to another feud they have with another channel, it's even better. But no, <laughs> um, that's not what I, 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 that's why I don't make a lot of negative videos. And that's why today was kind of a hard one to just kind of go, yeah, let me tell you why Hasbro pisses me off, right? And so I'll tell you why YouTube pisses me off too, is because I have to go into that whole scene knowing that's a risk out there. I could draw that upon myself by saying the wrong thing, right? That's why you see me so hesitant when, uh, when I'm talking to you guys and somebody offers a nice idea, I'm very hesitant because I'm like, okay, but if it goes south, what does that say to my, the people putting their faith in me, my subscribers or the people that I do interact with and make arrangements with, right? They put good faith in me. And if there was a drama and a conflict, what's that telling them? What am I here for? Right? So that's why you don't see a lot of negativity out of me, guys. You see a lot of positivity. I want to see, Hasbro succeed. I want Hasbro to to adopt me as their 50 year old uh, 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 mascot. <laughs> I, I want to be Flavor Flav for a lot of people. Aaron the Toy Enhancer. I want to be Flavor Flav for him. I want to be Flavor Flav for Down South these days. Uh, 77. If you aren't checking him out, do so. Uh, Flavor Flav for Hush TV. My friend here in Ottawa. I'm the one with Riley Cross. I want to be Flavor Flav for Hasbro itself. Even the bad shit, I'll be like, yeah, boy, now what? <laughs> you know, QC issues, they're back, oh yeah, get excited. Right, but as far as uh, just coming at it with a negative perspective, man, I would say the military made me jaded, but it didn't. It probably gave me a better perspective on what to get upset about than anything else, right? And it's just not worth some of this bullshit to get so heated over, like it or not, these amazing little six inch toys that we all fucking love but have flaws things have flaws how we manage our expectations and how we deal with flaws that's on us so that should be the most negative video you're going to see out of the crow uh for the most part but that doesn't mean if you don't pay attention to my videos you won't see more it'll be there Guys, uh, we're going to talk about live in the next video. I'm going to change live to Friday this week. I'll tell you why in another video. Uh, but I'm going to keep that one short today. i got to go make some supper for the fam and upload something for your daily content. We'll see you next time. Bye.